it's it's kind of really hard for for fetch to have a failure just because of the way it's designed so um how do i explain this so you've got a community now initially it's it's kind of centralized uh, they'll start rolling out tokens to um community report people who are going to be community reporters uh in the coming weeks or months um but you've got imagine a community of reporters that's all reporting a price on uh something like paul sex and those prices are aggregated so i'll tell you this our algorithm for our reporter for paul sex our algorithm what it's doing is it's looking at a variety of liquidity pools it's averaging them together it's also looking at the price of pulse against Dai, which is a large pool, and then comparing Pulse against PulseX, and it's deriving a price for PulseX from that, using the thick liquidity of Pulse to derive a price for PulseX. It's doing a variety of things, and it's aggregating all these prices together, and then um, it spits out a feed that says, this is the price of PulseX, right? And what that what that's actually doing is it gives you the most accurate price from all of these pools aggregated. If a whale or somebody was to try and manipulate, okay, let's say they go to one of those pools. Um, okay, go to one of those pools. It's aggregating all of them. And if there's a deviation of something like more than 15% or whatever, it just kicks that out anyway. So it's like it, it's literally taking the most accurate price across the entire chain at any moment. And then it spits that out and anybody can contest that. So somebody can go in and say, I don't like that price feed. It doesn't seem accurate. And they can literally freeze that reporter and put it into a dispute um, until um, community consensus says that was accurate or that was a faulty price feed. Um, and then further action is taken from there. So it's, it's, the safest way to get a feed, because you're not pulling from a single DEX that may not exist tomorrow, um, or a single DEX that's able to be manipulated easily because there's liquidity elsewhere. Liquidity is spread across lots of places. So you never want a feed pulled directly from one single place where it can be manipulated. Now, <clears throat> in the event that fetch for some weird reason, uh, was to freeze or pause or just simply stop working, which has never happened before. But let's just pretend a black swan event. There's something wrong with the contracts, even though they were audited multiple times and the thing just stops working or people stop reporting. What if the reporters for PulseX say, we don't want to be reporters anymore? We don't like the yield that's being generated for being reporters, so we quit, right? And they just stop reporting and they withdraw all their fetch tokens. And now there's no feed for PulseX. And Earn Protocol is looking for a price for PulseX from um, Earn Protocol. Well, if it's looking for that price feed and it doesn't receive one, within something like 16 minutes or something, um, it then goes to its fallback mechanism. Built in to the code of liquidity um, and then subsequently liquid loans and earn protocol, there's a fallback where if that was to ever happen, the system immediately starts retrieving a price from its secondary uh, source. Now, our secondary source is very similar and it's a little bit internally um, controlled where we we have these uh, scripts that are still pulling the feed from the same places that I just talked about for fetch. It's still looking at all these pools and aggregating and averaging these prices together, so on and so forth. And it just feeds that script that we have back into the protocol. So. Earn will never stop. 
And the only time that that could ever happen is if all the reporters pack up and leave and stop reporting the price of Pulse X. Well, then the system just goes back into our uh, centrally controlled oracle and the system keeps running. 